Hello there. I got this cobalt little job saw I've had for quite a few years. I don't know how many now. It had the original blade in it. We just did a little project, and I remembered I put a Freud blade on the side, and it's been there so long that <laughs> it's got rust on it. It's a 10 inch, 50 tooth, 5 8 bore laser cut, and the difference that I know a little bit about the blades are, this one you can pull the throat up, the saw is unplugged, the teeth are turned every other one on this blade. This is the one that came with it to cobalt. The Freud is a square cut, so this will do, you know, like a, a dado bottom, a square bottom versus an angle. I don't know much else than that. Um, ripwood, crosswood, chipboard, plywood, non-ferrous masonry. Well, non-ferrous and masonry is not recommended. Crosscut and chipboard and ripwood, everything else is pretty good. I was going to put this in, but we got a couple other little problems with it. Is the design of the saw, take you around the back here, is there's a, a lot of uh, sawdust chips that get stuck here in the bottom it's designed to have a vacuum on it and if you don't put a vacuum on there they build up in the bottom and you get a little slice of let's see i took this out of it here's the pile this was stuck in the bottom and what happens is when that gets built up the sawdust gets thrown up in your eyes you know but a little sliver gets stuck down in there all the time and probably a vacuum would help pull it out but the second thing that happens with that sawdust is it starts to bind up the saw. And not as far as it running, but the, as far as it adjusting. So to raise the saw blade up and down, counterclockwise is down, clockwise. You see, it can't, you feel like you're going to break the handle off. And so some of the sawdust, I believe, is binding in there. And we need to get this cleaned out. So... I got the tools, they stay strapped to the saw. Let's take this blade out of it. Like I said, it's unplugged. And I, I've never had the blade on on this saw. So it's been a pretty good blade as far as, see how this gets down in there. Pretty good blade as far as, uh, you know, cutting. I've done a lot of stuff with it. And, just recently I've noticed that it's starting to bog down because we cut a lot of hardwood cherry um, some maple a little bit of oak for Dawson's building over there and uh, that was pretty rough on this there we go get this blade out of here I'll show you the differences in the blades. Yeah, this is a cobalt. It's only a 28 tooth. And can't read anything else on it. So there's quite a bit of difference here. Is this has a, a clean out or a kick, whatever you want to call that. The blade itself, this angles this way, angles, angles, angles. The Freud, they're all the same. Probably is a better blade. Set that aside. Um, let's get all of our parts aside so we don't lose anything out here in the dirt. Now, this throat isn't bad. It um, is adjustable screws on it. I've adjusted them before. And right now, a little bent see that so if you run a board in it'll probably go down but it's going to want to push it up in the air and the throat on these are pretty thin you see that's bowed down in the center a little bit because it's gone to the job with me falls over in the trailer that's better falls over in the trailer and things get leaned on it and it's got your 
your little miter. Let's see now. We got to get down in there somehow. And here's your your kerf. This has a thumb wheel. You can loosen that up. It doesn't come out. Let's see if this comes up out of there. There's a bunch of sawdust down in that. I don't know how that comes out of there, but I was figuring to pull that out and clean it. And then there's some junk in there, but this thumb wheel stops. I don't know how that comes out. I had the owner's manual, but you know, you have something for so long and you misplace where you put it. So I guess I just tighten that back up for now. But I need the motor, which is the blade, to come up and down a lot easier than it does. So I'll show you how nice this folds up. That's what one function I like about this saw is press with your foot and lift. That's it. Get it up all the way there and just kick it and it locks. So here's that thumb wheel. Now I took and blew this off with the uh, wand there a little bit ago. And I don't see any other debris in it. So I might end up flipping the saw right upside down on this table. I probably will do that instead of the dirt. So cranking this, trying to figure out what has to move here. It's got two aluminum gears, and they look fine. The threaded rod looks clean, but it could be dry. And it also slides on this, which has a little debris on it. And this works hard, and I'm afraid I'm going to break it. And so, without taking the whole assembly apart, it's probably what it needs. I've got to find out what the moving parts are and what I can clean and lube. As I brought a little brake clean over, and that's probably what I should spray in there first. This here the gears turn right away but the center bolts not you see that wondering if anything's loose here no no but like I said it's a little annoying it's not going up and down very well it could have just a bunch of dust in there and need a lube so let me get the brake clean on it. So I got a little brake parts cleaner. And I'm going to spray these gears. Not much junk on them, so I'm not going to go crazy here. But what I'm interested in is this other side, the slide. See if there's any junk on that. And I set, I set the saw up on a couple of two buys to elevate this just a little so I can crank the handle up and down better and boy it moves very difficult so it barely moves and I'm afraid you know of harming something here these gears just like a, any differential it'll they do turn right away, but I was going to say, if there's a lot of play in them, it would be nice to shim one closer to the other one. But let's see what's going on here. I loosen this up to look in there. I don't even see what that does. just a cover shield. I'm looking for something that's binding. And I lubed the gears. I lubed this shaft and the spindle, the thread. And I lubed this shaft up and down. 
and it still didn't move very good and I lowered it down which is actually raised it up as far as I could in here and I saw that it looks like a little out of focus there but the sides of the motor are rubbing on this plate right there like two guides and I sprayed them with this lube and boy all of a sudden it started taking right off I wouldn't think you'd want lube on that because you know it attracts dust and this stuff I'm using garage door spray lubricant it says petroleum free I thought it'd be like a dry lithium or something but it comes out as a gooey mess um, you see it leaves like a, a grease so I don't know why they call that garage door but I think I'm gonna lube up all these pivot points I'll have to deal with any kind of dust building up but if I hit everything that turns and then figure out where it swivels and hit that too this has got to help because this swivel is right here and that's all this is is it just goes from side to side like that there that gives me a little better access too but it looks like right there and right there is where the guide was riding and it just freed right up doing that so I think I'm just gonna hit this a couple more times wipe off the excess and then run this up and down a few times and see if it's a world of difference just like everything needs lube you know um, and I'll hit underneath it run it up and down making a mess probably but what else you do I gotta make sure this thing will pivot this is a pivot right under there I brought out some WD-40 brake clean and this garage door spray lubricant I had given to me and I thought like I said it was a lithium type product and it's a oh it's almost like a grease so I'll tighten this back up put things back together set it down and uh, crank it up and down a few times and see if I did it maybe this is cured but it was annoying I get last job site I was trying to make a little piece and two hands on that crank handle I thought I was gonna break it and I looked underneath I didn't see a sawdust build up there's that and then uh, now I got to put the shield on the other side of that and then that's it I I took this big shield off on the inside and I'll run this thing up and down and see what we got. So I'll put this access plate back on there. Probably this will attract a lot of sawdust to the lubrication, but if I tried to brake clean and that didn't do anything, Start these screws. There's four of them. Run these in. This covers up the blade. And then we'll move on. We'll let this down and see if it worked, you know. Get in a better position here. Alright, well let's see if this works any better. It does. As I'm looking, the back side of the arbor here has two little nubs on it that rubs up and down this aluminum column. And that's what I lubed last. And it kind of took right off. So, look at that. Before, I was going to break the handle trying to do this. Probably have built up a lot of sawdust now. 
It operates pretty nice now. A little saw maintenance, right? Figured I better do it right now because I just got done using it and I don't want to wait till I need it and then it doesn't work, right? So let me jam our parts. We'll put our blade back on. Our, not our blade back on, but our new blade on. Brand new, a little bit surface rust on it. But this has been a pretty good saw. I mean, it hasn't, you know, bogged down too bad on me. I do like the portability. This saw is the easiest to move around. Oh, let's hold this bad boy. There we go. Turf runs true. So, what else we got to put back together? We got our throat we got to put on there. Put our blade back down. All that sawdust is cleaned out. But it had a chunk of, I think it was a piece of maple hardwood stuck in there. And then it stopped all the sawdust. Then we'll put our throat in. This goes in this way. Has four adjustment screws. And they're not too bad right now. You don't want it high, so high it hits. Um, I think we'll put our parts on the side. Take this as a spare. It still cuts. It's just not wonderful. A spare in case I hit a nail or not. And... Put your blade wrenches on. Your wing nutter. It's nice having your parts on board with you, you know. So a little saw maintenance. It runs good, it runs smooth. I've never had a shop back to it. I imagine it'd work a lot nicer with a vacuum on it suck all the dust out instead of blowing it back at your face we got our blade storage this bed here can you see it yeah. this bed here extends out so you can do a wider piece without it tipping set down and lock this has a push stick that I like this could be more accurate. They all could be more accurate, right? So you have to measure front and back a blade because it's not going to be good enough. The extension be nice if it was longer, but that's not bad. Help support your material. The push stick fits right in here. I like that. It's a nice, nice push stick. Say the fingers, and then I don't trust these. You got a gauge on them. I never trust them because it's easy to bump them out. So I measure everything with a tape measure. And on this side, our miter gauge goes this direction. Like that. And this, this is kind of nice because for a small one, it doesn't lift out of the groove. It's got detents at 90, 75, 60, 45, 30. So that's pretty, pretty nice. That's fairly accurate. Close enough for job saw. And then we've got our, our guide goes on. I don't remember which side. 
I leave it right on the saw, but you should put it in. Gotta remember if it fits down here. Like that, probably. And then, uh, like I said, it's pretty handy. It's one of the better ones I've had for a portable saw. And then to uh, get it to roll, you just step on the lock. Step on the lock, lift the handles, wheels go in, take it in all the way, give it a kick, the lock. You see the throat just fell out, so we do have to adjust that throat. But this thing moves around pretty good. Press that, comes right down, lock. But this throat, we we'll try to do a little bit more work on that, but I think we're almost ready to call this a, a win. This fits this way, and it's not real tight, so probably could bend this thing a little bit. Because it just fell right out. And then this side has a tab. I can bend that a little without breakage. Lock that in, and then push this in. Now it's not going to fall out, and it's down even. So there we go. It's a Cobalt. What's the uh, model number? Is a KT one zero one five. And I think I've had this for probably five years anyway. And when I take it to the job site, it does go to 45. Um, and that you just loosen this and push. So there's your blade angle. Um, I, when I take it to the job site, it's a little big to put in the truck. I've had it in the back of the truck. Even though it folds up, it's a small bed in the truck. But when I put it in the trailer, I try to strap it to the wall, but things fall on it now. And then that's why there's a couple pieces of... Uh, like on here sheet metal a little bend in it or something, you know, you take things with you They get a little abuse, but uh, thanks for watching. We got a little bit of maintenance on the table saw We did a lot of work on Dawson's building making all of his studs and rafters out of a pile of hardwood we got This works really nice and smooth Probably that lube will end up attracting dust and I'll end up cleaning it again. But now I know where the adjustment and the uh, the lube points are. So thanks for watching. We'll see you pretty soon.